mindset. So it's basically life giving you feedback on where you have gone and what you need to transition to the next level. Hi, in this video, I'd like to talk about mindsets for success. Basically, a mindset is a train of thought that you have about a specific situation or context. And that reminds me of a personal experience that happened in 2001, where I was following a training course on the Gold Coast in Australia. And I decided to take a week off to study for my exams. And I went to Daydream Island. That's a beautiful tropical island on the Great Barrier Reef. And in the mornings, I would spend a few hours studying for my exam. In the afternoons, I would think about basically daydream about how I was going to use the information that I was learning once I got back to the Netherlands. And what I didn't consciously know then, that week on Daydream Island was where I basically formed my basic mindset that allowed me to have a nice career in the years that followed after that. I've also experienced the flip side of a mindset with experiences where my mindset didn't get me the results that I was thought I was going to have. So I'm reminded of one incident that happened in 2011. I was studying with a mystery school, or you could call it a personal development slash meditational school that I'm still involved with with to this day but i came up to a point in 2011 uh, in my personal development where my trainer said to me well marcel you've almost completed this part of the course and we can now start to prepare for your initiation for the completion with a ceremony a ritual uh, so yeah to to complete that and i was quite happy about that and we talked about it and it seems fine but as I went home and I noticed that when I thought about this completion and the ritual the ceremony that we were going to do that I felt sudden flashes of fear actually going through my body and I, it actually was a fear almost like an electric current like a lightning flash that was quite painful that shot through my body each time I thought about that initiation ritual. Now what would have been wise for me to do is basically go to my trainer and or find other help to basically, okay, something's coming up on what's happening, but that's not what I did. So instead, I started to imagine everything that could go wrong and how horrible it might be and what, what consequences might come out of that situation. And I'm laughing about it now, which is a good sign. But at, at, the, at that time, yeah, it was, um, I basically created a mindset that, that made me more anxious than instead of actually being able to overcome the uh, the transition that I was facing. Now, it ended up quite well a few years later, but I'll get back to you that a little bit later in the video. Let's first go back and look at mindsets, like I said, trains of thoughts that you have about a context or specific situation. There are various aspects that make up a mindset and one of the key aspects are our beliefs. So let's have a look at what are beliefs, how are they formed, and how can you work with them. Basically, beliefs are general, generalizations 
about ourselves and the world and specifically also about what is possible for us or for life uh, uh, to do in certain situations. So if we look at how uh, those beliefs are formed, to put it in a, a very simple but yet still accurate way, is basically any time we have a strong emotion, either negatively or positively, and you have a clear vision or a clear image, a clear train of thoughts that you repeat a number of times, you're building a belief, and that's an important part of building a mindset. And the stronger the emotions, the clearer the images, the vision, and the more often you repeat them, the stronger the beliefs get. Now, the good thing about this is that most of the beliefs that we have actually serves us quite well. So you already have mindsets that allow you to be successful in a whole range of contexts and scenarios, situations in life. It's actually all the stuff that got you where you are. And that's a lot because you have overcome many, many obstacles to get there. And that's true for anyone. At the same time, I think it's fair to say that most of us come up to situations in our life where we say, okay, um, you know, I would like to improve a little bit in this or that area, or um, I, I, I'd like to get uh, yeah, some different results, some improved performance. So let's have a look at how can we work with beliefs and how can we work with mindsets? So we're we'll diving a little bit deeper into how beliefs are formed. Now, most of our beliefs are formed on an unconscious level. And that, this actually starts from a very early age when we are uh, being raised by our parents and we are picking up how they feel, how they behave. We start out by mimicking, head doing the same behaviors as mom and dad are doing. And later on, we get influenced by friends at school, by colleagues at work, by movie, by culture. Uh, so all through our lives, we have all these experiences where we have emotions, where we have thoughts, we repeat in certain patterns, and so most of our beliefs are formed at the unconscious level. And again, most of them will find it for you. And what we often find is when we go outside of our comfort zone, or when we come to certain transition points in our life, that we actually become conscious of the beliefs that we have, and how much they are either working for us or sometimes presenting us with an obstacle, saying, hey, you know, hmm, this is also something that you might work upon. Now, there are many ways that you will work with mindsets and beliefs. So in this video, I would like to cover one of those. And it is a particularly effective one if you should try it out and work with this one. And it goes basically in four steps. The first one is becoming aware of the beliefs that you have about a certain situation where you want to change something. Let's take an example. Let's see. Let's let's say that you are in a professional environment and you do a lot of meetings with colleagues at work, and you would like to be more a little bit more effective in the way you present your ideas and how you can collaborate with them, with your colleagues. So then the first thing, the step you might do, basically think back uh, to create awareness, think back about a few meetings that you had in the last few months. And just notice as an observer, you know, how did those meetings go? How did I feel about those meetings? What did I say? What was or didn't I say? How did my colleagues respond? And then 
if you uh, have that that picture, basically the movie that you're playing in your mind's eye, then see if you can become aware of, okay, so what is the belief that led me to behave in that certain way? Let's say that you find it not as easy to find the right moment to present your ID. Or maybe you find it not as easy to find the right words that actually engages your colleagues in dialogue. And you might have a, have a belief installed that um, you don't know how to present uh, ideas or you don't know how to, how to stand for yourself and, and the things you want to bring up in the moments when they matter most. So that would be a good belief to work with. So, and then the second step is reframe it. Then go back to some of those meetings and first start by noticing everything else in that meeting that you haven't noticed when the belief is active. So you basically associate into the meeting and then what more was going on? So, so you identify a belief which led you to behave in a certain way. But you know, how did you feel? How how did you feel about the topic? How um, how did you connect to your colleagues? Uh, did you were you able to ask good questions and identify the positive things that were still there, but you hadn't fully paid attention to? Because that's an important aspect about beliefs and about how they influence us is that belief they they steer our attention to things and either steer our attention to things within us or without us and therefore they can either support us and limit us in the options that we see and reframing basically has to do with looking at the same situation from various angles and preferably always returning to an associated state when you do so. So if you have those two states, you have become aware of a certain belief, a certain mindset you would like to change, you have reframed it, well, you know, that also a lot that did went well, and you know, I'm motivated to change that, then you can start the fun part, which is the, is the visualization. So you basically, making yourself into a movie director and imagining yourself with a huge mixing panel in front of you where you can actually change the inner representation, the inner movie. So you can change all the visual aspects of it. So maybe change the colors, change the brightness. Maybe if you're seeing a still image of the meeting, making a moving image. Maybe you can make it like those IMAX or, or 360 only version, complete video around you. And what can you do with the sound? And maybe the volume higher or lower, maybe the quality of your voice or the voices of your colleagues, the pitch, maybe just the words, you know, when, when you say something, um, how, how they react to it. How about the feelings? You might have levers for the feelings where first you felt a little bit anxious. Now you have a lever that says, well, oh, hmm, how about if I stay calm? And I'm just a little bit more calm and more connected. Or you have a feeling of the rhythm of the conversation and the moments I can either step in or create an opening where I can step in. So here you can play around with visualization and with submodalities. And submodalities is a term that comes from NLP. Basically, a modality is one of the five senses. So, so a, a way of how we process information. We see things, we hear things, we feel things, we smell things, and we taste things. And the submodalities are the finer details within each of those five senses. And I've just explained them actually already. So in the mixing panels, 
you know, it's getting the brighter color, maybe the image closer, and maybe it moving or still, uh, all sorts of things that you can play around with until you get a, a movie that's like a mind's eye internal representation that actually makes you feel good and important, makes it feel authentic for you. So you can you can just make slight adjustments but still comfortable for you, a little bit out of your comfort zone, but it, but it makes a difference and it still feels good. Then you rehearse that and then the final step is of course practicing in real life. So actually in the meetings that you were gonna attend are gonna attend in the next few months, and then take it step by step, visualize beforehand. And then maybe in the first meeting, you just want to rehearse uh, becoming more attuned to the rhythm of the conversations. You know, where are the openings? How can I naturally and authentically uh, uh, introduce an idea in one of those moments? Or how can I create an opening to induce my ideas? And then the next meeting, you might have uh, practice on the specific words. You know how how do I say it? How do I present it? Again, do I do it visually or words and what words? And how do I know if it's really effective? How if it's engaging my colleagues in the dialogue? And so you can build your mindset step by step and by practicing also embodying a mindset because that's where the great benefit of mindfulness come in is the moment that you have practiced it so much that it comes an automatic thing that you can embody and uh, yeah it's a part of who you have become so that's an exercise practically to work with mindsets now as i was for this video and as i was preparing i thought oh yeah i want to do one step more and to add something alongside it. And that's why I told you about the incident, the flip side I experienced between 2001, Daytree Island, and 2011, where I personally was in this moment of transition. Because there are also situations in life when We've done all we can trying to visualize, but we just have to let go and also let go of, of the image of the things that we, we want to we want to pursue and basically uh, open ourselves up, uh, returning to ourselves, but also let ourselves be be carried by life itself. So this is what happens also for me in that incident in 2011, where at that point I didn't proceed with the initiation ritual that I was invited to. Uh, and my life, my, my life path basically took another turn and I did seek help to uh, to deal with the things that were coming up for me. And actually, this turned out to be a very rich few years for me. So it took me about five years to work, to work all uh, through the things that were coming up with. But in those times, I met my wife, Ahati. I got some great assignments to work on. My career was picking up. I renewed, or basically, I should say, I deepened uh, the friendships that I had with my close friends because I was uh, getting engaged and married with Artie I got a whole wider range of family and friends to engage with and I just got to work on finding more balance and stability in the various areas of life where before that I studied quite hard on my personal development, on my career, but it, it, it was also, uh, yeah, a bit focused on one point and a bit lonely. 
So I was successful on one end, but to be honest, I was also quite lonely at that time. And so those extra years just gave me uh, yeah, some more room to work on being more socially embedded and, and finding balance in other ways. And then in 2016, I felt I was finally ready to, to do go through that transition point. So I contacted my trainer again. We pre started preparing and in June 2016. Yeah, I was able to go through that initiation. And I remember when, when I was going to Glastonbury in the UK for this event, or the ceremony, um, then I went to the venue and they asked me to wait for 15 or 20 minutes outside because they had to prepare and set some things up in the, in the, in the room. And as I sat there with my ropes, which is, you know, one of the things that you do in those, uh, those events, and I remember that there was this moment that that mindset, the, the anxiety of, oh, I don't know what's going to happen, what if it's going to go wrong? And it still came for me. And it was in that moment I was able to decide, point out, yeah, I, that's true. I, I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know this is something that I really want to do. And somehow I, I can trust that I, I can find a way through it. And this is the mindset that I was able to go into that initiation ritual, which turned out to be, for me, a, a very... Yeah, inspiring and, and very, very sporting experience. And yes, there were certain tests that go along with, with those things, but I found those meaningful as well. So those, yeah, so that brings me to, to those, those two aspects of, of a mindset. Uh, the one from, a personal development leadership success point of view. And I do still actually believe that that's the foundation for creating mindset for success is basically creating the discipline, uh, working on your beliefs, taking small action steps, and you can create and do so many things in life uh, that make it much more in the flow, much more loving, rewarding, happy, and successful in, in various areas. And there are also moments in life when events happen or we go to big changes, then that we need something else. So we need to, we need to let go. We need to return to, to our own self. We need to trust and basically enter stillness and and from that point wait until the experiences itself basically the surrounding the people around us basically give us the feedback so it's in in the spiritual mindset it's actually the environments the experience that you get that actually programs the beliefs and programs the mindset so it's basically life giving you feedback on where you have gone and what you need to transition to the next level. So we covered quite a bit in this uh, this video on what mindsets are and uh, note that I notice that I say mindsets with an S, so multifold that in the first slide there. The it's not a single mindset, but you can have a mindset in various areas of life about various topics. Just to give you some example, for instance, an abundance mindset, you know, having thoughts and beliefs that there is place for you, and there's enough for everyone, so also enough for you, and also enough room for you 
to pursue your dreams and find your place in the world to make a contribution. contribution. A positive mindset is basically what we talked about, the reframing, looking at things from certain angles, various angles, looking the glass of half full instead of half empty. A nice one that I come across over the last few years is from a lady, I forgot the name now, that's worked on a growth mindset. So how do you, what do you believe, what do you think about your own capability of keeping learning uh, and keep developing yourself across time and across context? And a spiritual mindset that we touched upon as well to basically balance the, the mindsets that we usually work with in personal development and leadership programs. So this is the video for, the, uh, for today, including an exercise that you can, uh, you can work with if you want. And if you do, please remember uh, to start with the mindsets that you already have, because you already got a very successful mindset that brought you to the place you already are. And if you like to change from a growth mindset uh, perspective into areas where there's more to discover, there are some steps for you to work with. Thank you very much for watching this video and going through this together with me. And I'll be looking forward to uh, seeing you again next time. Thank you.